Welcome to my designer class. My name is Mercy and I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. In today's tutorial, I'm bringing you this beautiful card. It's quite masculine and the real highlight is this chicken wire that I've made into copper. Now, um, there are a lot of details in this card, so I won't show all the coloring and I won't show some of the things, but I do want to show you a few of the details that were really relevant and I wrote out this whole sheet so if you want to take a screen capture of that right now, that would be a great idea if you want, need any details because I'm not sure if I'll get around to putting this all in the um, description of the video or tutorial. Okay, so I will set this aside and um, we're going to start off by doing the background. Now, for the background, I used this gorgeous buffalo check and I used my Stamparatus. So I'm going to have to move a few things around. <laughs> um, everything is bulky, so it takes some space. But I've already mounted this um, buffalo check, so it's ready to go, and it shouldn't take too long to do this element. OK, so this is just some scratch paper. And I've put an L in here because there is a little bit of an overlap, and you kind of need that overlap just to get it in properly because we are just doing the whole entire card stock. Okay, for a second there I couldn't find this. All right, so my original card I used um, crumb cake, but this one I'm going to use um, Sierra sand, and I will stamp it, um, the background. I don't think you can quite see when I stamp this, but the point with using the Stamparatus is if you mess up, you can do it again. And that is a wonderful, wonderful thing, because if you're a perfectionist, this is the solution for you. Okay, so um, when you're stamping, the center doesn't matter as much as the outer part. I know that kind of makes sense, but because you're going to have the main focal image in the center, it will cover some of it. So I'm going to see, you know, just press really well here. I'm going to see if it came out pretty well. And I have this weird line here, and the only reason is because I scored it. So part of this is going to be bent over back, and I don't think it's a big deal. So you could mask it with a large um, post-it note, but I'm, I didn't bother, and I don't think it would bother most people either. Okay, so I'm really happy with the first round. So I will set this aside. Just put my scratch paper. I'll clean this up later with my chamois. And I will um, move on to the next part, which is coloring. But I will go ahead and fold this card while I'm thinking about it. And if you don't have a, one of these handy bone folders, it's definitely worth the investment. To get a nice crisp line is really a wonderful thing. OK, so I'm setting that aside for the time being. And I'm going to bring out my blends. Now, I used a ton of them, and I'm not going to show everything I did here because that would take forever. So you can see I used a lot here. And don't get scared about that. You, uh, most of these you will want on, in your stash anyway. So for me, it wasn't a big deal that I used a ton. And when you tend to have a ton, you tend to use a ton, <laughs> if that makes sense. So um, one of the most exciting things, I'll bring the card back in, to me is this discovery that my upline told me about, which is how to have this like splotted. And so it looks like cardboard here more. I don't know if you can see it. There's some definite color variation. And the other thing is these leaves are really special to me because they have the red center for the caladium. And caladiums definitely have a lot of red veining, and some of them, all kinds of colors. You could do purple. You just, the possibilities are endless. So um, I will show a little bit about how I did the cardboard, which is so easy for the center. I first took a bronze, um, the bronze blend, and I went ahead and colored it. And I'm sorry, I'm a little bit shaky today. I think I had too much caffeine this morning, which is not a good thing. So my coloring is just definitely not up to my standards. So I apologize, but you will get an idea. And I do have one that's already prepared. 
So I won't do all the coloring. It would just take too long. I think to color one of these, you would have to spend probably 20 minutes easily. So um, to me, that's worth the time. But for you as a watcher and my inability to kn know how to fast forward while I'm recording or do, actually, I'm sure that's done in the editing, but you can see that I'm not too technically savvy yet about these videos, but hopefully as time goes on, I'll learn more and I can ha produce better and better tutorials. So please stick around and consider subscribing. If you would do that, that would be awesome. And that way I can keep bringing you videos and also ordering <laughs> since I do sell the products. Okay, so um, I did the bronze and now I'm coming in with the crumb cake. And the reason why I did the crumb cake is I kind of felt like it was almost too reddish. And that's the beauty of the blends. You can really use several colors. So, and that's just beautiful, just the way it is right there. But if you want color variation, here is the secret. It is the color lifter. Now you use the um, fine tip N, which is the nubby N in my description is, um, always, I always say nubby N, but really it's the fine tip N according to Stamp It Up. So whatever you prefer, and you just dot. I don't know if you can see, but I'm just dotting here. So how hard is that? I don't think that's too hard at all. Even someone who's not technically an artist like myself can easily do this technique and get amazing results. So I will show this. If you can see that, it's just so cool. So that was the one tip I had with about coloring. And the other tip was about the leaves. Now, I did multiple steps with the leaves to really blend it in. First, I came with the nubby N and I got all these beautiful caladium centers. And I just pretty much followed the pattern. I won't do all these leaves because that would take too long. So I will just probably focus on one or two and then I'll finish this up later. Okay, so I just laid down some dark real red. This is in, offered in the um, holiday catalog. And next I came in with a light old olive. And this side I used the brush in. And I just covered it all up. Because eventually I want this red to be actually pretty muted. Now I, I'm not sure what other people use. Maybe they use cherry cobbler. I don't know, but I like this kind of look and I like working with it. So you can see right here, it's pretty obvious and it just doesn't blend, it doesn't have the real blended look. So do not fear, come back in with your dark color and cover it up. That's what I did. And I went a little bit beyond. So I covered it, I don't know if you can see that, and I just went a little bit further on the edge. So. After that, I was like, huh, oh, that looks pretty good, but it kind of needs a little bit more blending, in my opinion, for this. Sometimes I don't like blending it too much, but with this one, I do. So I just went over again with the light old olive, and then it really just has a nice blended look, in my opinion. So that's my tip about the caladium leaves. And the next thing I did want to show is I did do um, a little bit with the cattail, the same technique I did with this cardboard. So I took a, a the Cajun, light Cajun craze and I just colored it, which is no big deal. Nothing special here. And then I took that bronze color and just added a hint of it where the dark areas are. So I just dabbed a little. You don't have to be too careful here. Okay, and then once again, the magic tool, the color lifter, I went in here. Now, if you've seen cattails, they start to shed, if you will, and they look all kind of like some lighter colors and, um, darker and so forth. So I thought this kind of adds a more realistic, not that I'm really going for truly realistic look, but 
anyway, just something to think about trying. But if you don't have a color lifter, maybe this will convince you that you definitely need one. So um, the next step I'm going to show is kind of what I consider the highlight of this card, which is this chicken wire. Now, when I saw the um, new catalog, <laughs> the holiday catalog, I thought, wow, I absolutely have to have this chicken wire elements. But I was like, why didn't they have it in copper? I would have loved copper. The silver is gorgeous. And you can see the silver here. I don't know if this will show up too well. It's beautiful. And you can flip it over and there's white, which is also cool. And I have a card here that I made with the white. And I think that's really pretty too. But I went back to this copper idea. And copper is really hot right now from what I've heard. I don't know, you know, my source is how accurate it is. But I wanted copper and so copper I got. Now I took my silicone um, Stampin' Up product here and this is a little bit has a little bit of stuff on it but not to worry it won't matter too much and I oh I, and the other thing I mentioned I should have mentioned is I did cut this in half so you have a sheet like this and I cut it this direction straight in half and cut it before you take it out of this um, shell here so that will make it easier for you. Okay, so I will go ahead and do this. Now, the side that I um, trimmed up a little bit was on this side. And so this side will be the one that I will have in the center. And part of it will be covered with the milk can. So I'm not too concerned to get it perfectly evenly covered, but it's still, you can do a second pass, which is also very helpful if you missed any parts. So anyway, without further to do, I will get on with this. Um, just stamp it like this. And it's a little bit messy, but it's really not that hard or take that long, which is awesome. So um, just do a real even coating, set this aside. And for the um, sake of the video, I did put it in a big container here my um, just to make it faster the embossing powder here it's the copper and I'm gonna go ahead and preheat my um, gun because it does need some time to warm up and I will start by doing this so I just you could do the copper in but I think it's better to do the white I think it adheres a little better not the copper but the silver end I'm sorry I can't speak right when I'm doing a video and I see that I missed a few spots, but it's not a big deal to do a second pass, which I will show. Now, I will come in here and where, oh, I, I need my tweezers potentially. That does make it a little easier. So you can grip it with the tweezers or you can just hold it down simply. And look at this, this is just gorgeous when it comes up and it comes up really fast. So it's just stunning. And it makes it thicker, too. I hope you can hear me above this. Okay, um, I think I missed a few spots. But I'm going to do a second pass just to show you. It's really not a big deal if you mess up the first time a little bit. It's hard to get it 100%. I haven't. And this sticks, but this is a silicone mat, and it'll eventually just scrape it right off. But I won't waste time doing that. I am going to go ahead and finish this and get it perfect because Guess who's a little bit of a perfectionist? Me. I probably should have used the embossing buddy, but I didn't find that this is too um, sensitive to static or fingerprints. So again, just stamp it with like right on the silicone. And the silicone is very easy to clean up afterwards. I just used the chamois with water and it just cleaned right up. So I'm gonna go ahead, dip it again, shake it, and this time should be the charm. And I hope this is hot enough. It should be still hot enough. Because I just did that like one minute ago. If that. So again, see how it just comes up and you can fix it. So don't worry if you don't get it the first time around. The second time around, you can do an absolute perfect job. And you won't, no one will be any the wiser that it took you two passes. No one will care. <laughs> Okay, so I will um, clean up my silicone mat because I'm going to use it again 
when I'm putting a little bit of tape runner down. So I'll clean this one off. And this particular one I got from Amazon. And if anyone's curious, I could message you or I can put it in the description if I get around to it. Okay, so it cleans up pretty well. Not, it takes a little bit of effort, but and it might be better just to do this under the sink. I don't know. Okay, but for the sake of the video, and the fact that I don't have running water right here, this will do. All right, so I will put it back down and I will get out my handy dandy snail, which I have right here. And I will just cover it some. And this will, the main part of this will be held down by the um, milk can. But I do want it a little bit sticky just so it doesn't curl up or anything. So anyhow, I have a finished, I've gone ahead and finished a can here and I've cut, done all the coloring and it's really beautiful, I think. So I will um, bring in the rest of the elements, which would be my beautiful card base that we did on camera. And I will add this, which is vellum and this beautiful wood DSP colored cardstock that I've already gone ahead and um, used with the Big Shot with the um, thin, well, framelits, whatever, from the, re it's now Stitched Seasons framelits. I think it's no longer available. But for those of you who had that, that would be awesome. You can definitely use it here. Or you can use another layering type background. All right, so I put it towards the top because I really wanted to maximize the look of the wire. And then with my wire, the end that I just trimmed up, which isn't quite as perfect as this side, I just laid down here, centered it, and hoped for the best. Now, it doesn't stick extremely well, but again, once we put this on, it will definitely hold it really well. Okay, taking this off. Now for the inside of the card, I used the um, very vintage Hostess set. And I will show that because I thought this would be, make a really great birthday masculine card. For I just think it's perfect, all the colors. It's very fallish. So maybe someone who has a birthday in the fall. And I did something I should not have, which is I forgot to take off the backs of the dimensionals. Oh, well. <laughs> anyway, I'll do that after the fact, so I won't waste time doing that since I goofed up. But you can definitely see how beautiful this card turns out. And I hope you try the copper chicken wire technique. Now, the chicken wire is not orderable right now. They sold so much of it, they are temporarily out, but hopefully, they will bring it back in stock soon while we, um, before Christmas and so on, which I think I'm sure they will. All right, so this is what I did with the inside. Happy birthday. If you are curious, what I, the color here is Cajun Craze against the crumb cake is what I used. Anyhow, um, thank you again so much for watching, and I hope you will consider subscribing to my channel and if you need any Stampin' Up! products, let me know and for qualifying orders, you will get a free gift. And um, you can email me at mewants3 at gmail.com for any further details. Happy stamping and come back again soon. Thanks so much.